Hello, how's it going? In today's video, we're continuing Chronicle Volume 2, and we'll be looking at Talon King Terok. So let's go! Despite the growth of the Ogre and Orc people, nobody ever dared venture into the Spires of Iraq. It was widely thought that this land was cursed, and the remaining Arakoa guarded it pretty heavily. These remaining Arakoa were a little weird. They called themselves High Arakoa, but they were a pale shadow of what their race had once been. They were ruled over by a line of kings, but also what was left of the Anhar Order. They were a superstitious bunch, and only had access to fragments of the Apexis Empire's coveted knowledge, much of it pieced together incorrectly. For example, the remnants of the Anhar Order still worshipped Rukmar, but seemed to have a fundamental misunderstanding of her teachings. Rukmar had been all about treating Anzu's sacrifice with reverence, and preserving Sethic Hollow. But these High Arakoa interpreted that as Sod Anzu used Sethek Hollow for punishment and execution. Any who disagreed with the Anhari's teachings were cast into the region's pools, and we're not talking heated swimming pools, this was the blood of Seth, which was still very much cursed. Most of those who were thrown in died, but some were deformed and rendered flightless. They became known as the Outcasts and were exiled from all High Arakoan settlements. Outcasts were stuck on the ground, obviously, so they were forced to contend with a predator called Saberon. This feline race roamed throughout Draenor, but absolutely loved hanging out in the spires of Iraq hunting outcasts. But it wasn't long before a particular group of Saberon, the Bloodmane tribe, and its leader Pride Lord Karash, had become a little bit bored, and decided they wanted to hunt the flying Arakoa as well. Karash trained his followers to use nets, ropes, and harpoons, and they focused on high Arakoan scouts to hone their skills without alerting those who lived atop the spires. Once confident in their ability, Karash was like, let's go, and their war on the high Arakoa began. They ambushed large groups of the winged creatures, slaughtering them to the last. The High Arakoa had no bloody idea what had hit them. The king of the High Arakoa, Terok, stepped up at this point. He knew he needed to do something. Instead of sending his soldiers into battle, he just went out and raided solo. He single-handedly turned the tide of the war, inspiring other Arakoa fighters to follow him against suicidal odds. After months of fighting, Terok cornered Pride Lord Karash and bloody destroyed him. The war had been won. The rest of the High Arakoa were pretty pleased by this. They celebrated their king as a hero, some even believing he was the reincarnation of Rukmar herself. The Anhari priests weren't big fans of that. Until now, they'd been the only ones allowed to speak in the Sun Goddess's name. Terok went ahead and built a new city in the clouds called Skyreach. He also instituted new laws, which restricted the authority of the Anhar Order, and declared that the High Arakoa would be a society guided by knowledge and wisdom, not fear and superstition. And the Anhari were like, you what, mate? In the dead of night, they kidnapped Terok and his daughter Lithic and cast them into Sethek Hollow. The next day, they bloody well lied to the High Arakoan people, told them Rukmar decided she hated Terok and cursed his bloodline. They renamed themselves the adherents of Rukmar and declared that there would never again be a king. They were now the stewards of the High Arakoa's future. Anybody who disagrees probably find themselves going for a little swim, a little dip in the blood pools, sleeping with the fishes. Capiche? Meanwhile, Terok struggled in his new life as an outcast. He'd survived his little dip in the blood pools, but his daughter had not. This had twisted him physically and mentally. He was pretty angry and had almost succumbed to his grief, but a voice in the darkness had urged him to get up and move forward. He gathered the other outcasts and decided to seek out this mysterious voice, and he soon found out it was Anzu, the Dread Raven. The Raven God informed them that he'd just been hiding this entire time and taught them the secrets of sorcery and shadow magic, giving rise to powerful outcasts known as Talon Priests. Empowered with this new knowledge, Terok led the outcasts to ancient Apexis ruins and built the city of Sketith. In time, the outcasts would assert dominion over the forests near the spires of Iraq, and their lands would become known as Terokar Forest. But things weren't all that dandy for them. Terok lost his marbles due to the curse of Sethek Hollow and became increasingly desperate to cure his affliction. When he started sacrificing his own people, the other Talon priests stepped in and subdued him. They bloody imprisoned him, and we're leaving it there! So I think that's the last of the Arakoan stuff for quite a while. The rest of the chapter we can focus on orcs and ogres. Plus, pretty soon a new race is going to arrive on Draenor, so that's exciting. If you enjoyed this video, press the like button. You could subscribe if you want, but all there's left to say is, thanks very much for watching, and see ya!